Hello guys and welcome to our next video about uh, the Python internals. Uh, today we are continuing our talk about the importance of understanding the bytecode, uh, the opcode, uh, and how actually we can extract uh, the valuable information and uh, get a deeper understanding what uh, our code uh, is actually doing here. So we have a simple questions and a simple code here. So uh, we are going to uh, run with for loop through the integer and um, the, we are going to print i. And uh, as you expect it will give uh, the type error uh, that int object is not iterable. This is the same thing uh, if you uh, call the iter method on the k. So this is the same thing because the for loop uh, uh, requires as an iterable object. So, uh, but the question is uh, why? Why int object is not iterable? Or how it uh, actually implemented uh, in the C Python? To understand this, we are going to disassemble uh, the our code and. Uh, try to follow the instruction set of the bytecodes and or, or the opcodes and uh, try to find how it's implemented. For this we are going to run uh, our dummy.py file and the interesting part for us is this uh, get iter opcode and the for iter. So we can find uh, uh, these opcodes uh, and uh, the evaluation loop. Also, the evaluation of the code and the evaluation of the frame in ceval.c file, which is stored in the Python uh, folder uh, in the uh, C Python source code. So, uh, there's a huge switch case. So, as you see, the case, case, case. So, and each target is just simply uh, the sequence of actions that requires uh, to run in order to finish and uh, finish your code and uh, give you a, a result uh, if it's possible to say like that so interesting thing for us is that get iter target so we required here that it is going to run the get iter and inside get iter we are going you know, to explore some a few things so it's getting the, uh, the iterable object uh, from the stack top uh, then it's going to uh, check uh, the get the uh, iterable um, iterable object uh, using the pi object get iter uh, function let's dig into this this is in abstract c uh, the file and excuse me and here it's uh, that's there's some kind of interesting thing. So if you notice that this is exact uh, uh, exact error, so object is not iterable. So how it's checked? Uh, first of all, it's checked uh, from the TP iter, the type uh, type and TP iter field, and it checks that if it's null, uh, then it's going to return the type error. So type error, this thing. So this type error implemented uh, in CPython like type error and uh, the error itself. So you can easily change it, for example, write uh, blah blah just uh, to see uh, the effect and recompile your code. Um, then run, oops, not, not, not with this. <laughs> So int object is not blah blah blah. So this is exact uh, the same error. So just revert this, change, recompile. So now in, in understanding this thing that uh, if some object has tp iter and if it's not null, then it indicates that this object is iterable. So for us. Uh, uh, now we have explored the pylong type uh, in uh, the in the integer type uh, video, and it has actually as a TP iter, but it's not implemented here. So if you uh, if you get the 
uh, to the pylong type and look at the TP eater section. And this is a zero. And uh, it, it means that it's not implemented on null. So that's why this uh, this check is fail here in abstract C and in abstract C and uh, it is actually the equal to the null and then it's going to return the object is not iterable uh, the, uh, fail so error. Uh, in contrast uh, with iterable objects we can easily check let's just enable our GDB um, so break main and run then call pi initialize and if you just mm, look at the pi list type type uh, TP iter it's actually implemented so it's returning the list iterator object how about how about uh, the tuple so if you get that uh, pi tuple type TP iter it's returning the tuple iterator object the same thing for uh, as in for set so for pi set type TP iter and it's returning the set iterator so each uh, the complex object uh, in uh, in the Python has implemented its own uh, iter iterator implementation I'd say and it's returning uh, through this TP iter Mm, and in, uh, if we check the pile long type mm, TP eater, so it's returning the null uh, memory address, zero memory address, and in C we know that this zero memory address is actually it's the same thing with the null. So that's actually how it's uh, the checked. Um, when we are going to uh, return or create the iterator object from our uh, uh, from our object, uh, this is a simple question, but it's quite informative to dig into these opcodes and look at how it's actually uh, checked behind the scene. Uh, there is also a for iter, which I'm just just want to show it so let's just search it mm -hmm. uh, and this is it's creating like a, a for loop with uh, the using this for either uh, the, the opcode and uh, the interesting thing is that with get iter uh, there's a prediction for uh, you know, there's a comment about the predict. So when the predict macros are enabled, some opcode pairs follow in the direct succession without updating f f last instruction. So this is actually from the frame object. Uh, we are going to dig into uh, this one maybe in mm, several uh, future videos. But uh, for instance, get iter followed by the for iter is effectively a single opcode. So Whenever it sees the get iter, as the documentation states, it predicts that the next step is a for uh, iter, uh, the opcode. So for and basically this is a true because we are using the iterables or iteration uh, the most of the time with the uh, for loop or uh, for iterator. Um, that's it for now. Uh, see you uh, in the next video. Mm, I guess I think that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the global and uh, local variable storage and uh, its effect of to the, uh, the performance uh, of the Python code. Okay, see you in the next video.